Today, we're diving into the colorful, crazy, and sometimes bizarre world of Pablo Picasso. The guy who once said, Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. Get ready for a ride through different styles, periods, and a few funny facts. But don't worry, I'll keep it light and fun. Stick around, there might be a quiz or two. No pressure, let's jump right in. Pablo Picasso, born in 1881 in Spain, was what you might call a child prodigy. He could paint like a master by the time most kids were learning how to tie their shoes. But his early years weren't all sunshine and rainbows. After moving to Paris, he experienced a time of great sadness, which he expressed through his blue period. You guessed it, most of his paintings were blue. Now, what do you think influenced Picasso's blue period? Was it A, a breakup of his first love, B, the loss of his friend, or C, he ran out of every other color of paint? If you chose B, you're right. Picasso was deeply affected by the death of his friend and this somber time led to the creation of some very emotional blue-toned works. After all that blue, Picasso moved on to his rose period. Sounds happier, right? It was. He made some new friends, mostly circus performers, and this time, his art was full of warmer, more playful colors. It was like his paintings took a deep breath of fresh air. Then Picasso made a sharp turn into something radically new, cubism. I know what you're thinking. Why does that person have three noses? Well, cubism was all about breaking things into geometric shapes, showing multiple perspectives at once. So, what was the goal of cubism? Was it A, to paint people as robots? B, to show things from multiple angles at the same time? Or C, to confuse everyone at art galleries? If you picked B, you got it. Picasso wanted to show objects from multiple viewpoints, all at once. As for C, well, Let's just say he kept people on their toes. Just when you thought you'd figured Picasso out, he jumps into surrealism, where the dream world meets reality. He started painting faces that looked like puzzles and experimenting with wild ideas. Picasso was never afraid to push the boundaries. He once said, Art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. Okay, quick question. What's surrealism? Is it A, art that looks super realistic? B, art that shows the wild world of dreams and imagination? Or C, art that makes you say, what is happening? If you chose B, and maybe a bit of C, you're spot on. Picasso loved creating things that made people stop and think, sometimes laugh, and other times go, wait, what? So what makes Picasso a legend? Well, he created 50,000 pieces of art. That's right, 50,000. Picasso also played a massive role in shaping modern art. From cubism to surrealism, his influence is everywhere. He inspired artists to be bold, to take risks, and to see the world in new ways. All right, friends, Picasso trivia time. How many paintings did Picasso create? Was it A, 1,000? B, 5,000? Or C, 50,000? 
If you picked C, congrats! Picasso was a one-man art machine. Before we wrap up, here's some fun facts about Picasso. He once made art with a shotgun. No, not kidding. He could draw before he could walk. He loved collecting owls. Yes, owls. If Picasso were alive today, what would his social media handle be? Would it be A, Picasso the Cube Master? B, paint me like one of your cubist girls? Or C, the Owl Collector? There's no right or wrong answer here. Thanks for joining me today on this Picasso adventure. Remember, art isn't about getting everything right. It's about expressing yourself. So, go out there. Create something wild. See you in the next lesson.